Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Carlos Pinheiro, the CEO of Animal Data Analytics. So Carlos, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Hi, Clayton. Thanks. Uh, I love that word. Please send it to be here with this opportunity. Um, I am Vips. I've been working in the spine industry for the last uh, 30 years. Um, I got my PhD recently, about four years ago, in, in Japan and Tokyo University, which is uh, which is unusual. And I have the privilege of being working in different uh, areas uh, like uh, reproduction, uh, nutrition, um, uh, man- general management, etc. And right now we're dedicated to do help the people to get the best uh, from their business just to, with the intelligent use of data of any, of any kind, leading a, a team of uh, almost 50 people, uh, vets, uh, data scientists, mathematicians, engineers, and and I have to keep the wheels rolling. Yeah, so from what I understand, what I've seen that is you have quite a bit of experience in deciphering those data sets and highlighting the more important aspects of animal research. So I know we only have about nine minutes today, but what do you think some swine researchers like myself need to improve when it comes to collecting and interpreting data? And well, at the very end, always is a question of answer questions. And let's say that way. And something that I hear lately is, well, who needs applied research when you have big data? And normally the best is the combination of those two worlds. Of course, you need certain extent of applied research, but you can do many things having data or even Big data, not only because of the amount or because of the of the uh, complexity of the data they are dealing with. Uh, in this sense, there's a classical confusion since many people it's uh, is able it, it's not differentiating data, information, and and knowledge. They're not the same. Many companies, and it's something that I see from, from let's say from, from from Vietnam to US and and Europe, is that many companies are rich in data and poor information and in many cases or the classical approach is that well we have a software we can do many things well yes but in many cases you don't need the software you need an information system which is a combination of software hardware because now we we have a number of uh, sensors and uh, genes like uh, feeding systems or climate control systems together with uh, working protocol this information system should be able to feed them with good information, either a guy that is working in a farm or a researcher like you, um, including also uh, medium and high high methods. In many cases, and if people is not because they are specialists in um, working on the farm or in the clinic observation uh, or whatever, but they are not specializing in, in an analytic sense. Something that I, I see frequently that many people are suffering is we call Kind of a joke, but it's a, it's it's a, it's true. It's intoxication or intoxication of information. You're overwhelmed with a kind of with a, lots of uh, data and information. Um, to 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 take good care of this, there's a new profile that is arising from, from a basic standard, a very high standard that could be required for a um, for a researcher is the KPI map, key performance indicators map here which is a person that is able to read and understand and use those KPIs from different data sources, generating the proper actions promptly, whatever uh, the, the, the standards that they are following, from. very basic to, to, to vets or researchers. Um, under this approach, uh, it's good that the use that we have been uh, doing that of uh, data in the last uh, years, these classical uh, KPIs are useful, but side tags, we need a, a new way of our understanding. Uh, for instance, uh, some absolutely uh, critical uh, indicators from mortality or retention rates that must be rethought or reused, but also new ones like uh, pigs delivering the lifetime of uh, salt that it was not so important now, or a concept that I love, which is the feed, feed, feed efficiency in lactating salts. Uh, this is uh, something that until now only matters that um, the sow is eating as much as possible, but now we need to understand that is uh, that is properly used for the uh, for the sow. That in this concept, I uh, I'm always one of the good things when you are thirty something years in this business is that you understand things better, and uh, uh, classical tools are 
great and we should not forget them. But sometimes we need a fine tuning or another use of that. And I'm in love with the productivity trees developed by Gary Dial, the University of Minnesota in the 90s. Very useful. We can understand better what's going on on a farm or in a, in a, in a cow body. Uh, but right now, if we could buy those classical tools with certain uh, artificial intelligence algorithms, algorithms, machine learning, deep learning, or others, uh, can generate great and new insights to improve, improve production in a very customized way to every farm because the improvement that you need uh, in, a, in a farm to be different or the way to uh, get those improvements in, in any far could be very different in another in another word. And some others, and uh, this is something that is quite trendy and uh, lately, some of them, as I have mentioned before, uh, should be rethought or re or re understood. Uh, for instance, mortality, source mortality. Um, uh, I can't uh, visit a country and uh, find a, a producer, a vet or whatever, that is not concerned. Uh, all this. And the lot was, well, we have a number of sows dying or euthanics or, or, or whatever. Uh, mortality is not just mortality. It's an indicator of quality of production. It's kind of thermometer and must be interpreted together with other indicators, for instance, pension or replacement, rage or only food. This mortality provides a picture of how the sows are coping with the challenges and stressors in different combinations because they're always present in the farms. For instance, thermal stress, social stress, catabolic, immunological ones, sometimes related to certain nutrients that are that are not there. And in many cases, it seems that have been clearly underestimated as a number, a good number of recent papers demonstrate that. Demonstrate that. So we have, we have done a good job. We have disaggregated all of them. Uh, as uh, technicians, researchers, or whatever. But we forgot about aggregation. And a sow is experiences all of those challenges, one on top of the other. And the challenge initially is only a bit sad uh, about uh, uh, um, a bit loss of farming rate or number of pigs right, or whatever, something that is not very important. Later, all we can observe clinical symptoms, something that is that we can observe in a practical way abortion, mummies, uh, lameness, or whatever. And at the very end, what the sow is not able to deal with more stressors, one on top of the other, uh, dies, or you need to euthanize the sow, or whatever. Uh, and probably this is even uh, um, even more underestimated since uh, gills are not properly uh, recorded in terms of the of, uh, of uh, the deaths uh, because they are not um, uh, productive sows until they are have made it so probably um, uh, the problem is even uh, is even more serious than uh, than, than we think and uh, and no need to pay attention in particular to to that so um, altogether uh, we can say that um, sows in this case. They talk us in many different uh, ways, and one of those ways is uh, through data. But we need we need to be able to read, understand, and come to some conclusions. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a farmer staff person, if it or a researcher. The only difference is the questions that you that you place. I think they're of great help for this. Anamin International Supplier of Precision Minerals. When most trace minerals are only bioavailable. Animan trace elements are also active in the digestive tract and permit secure piglets' gut health. A leader in swine nutrition solutions driven by science. Novus's products and services look at the whole animal, focusing on productivity and well-being in order to feed the world affordable and wholesome food. For more information, visit Novus's website at www.novusint.com. Awesome. So thank you for coming on the show. I believe that's all the time we have today, and I appreciate you being here. My pleasure, Clayton. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com, and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. 
And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.